On this episode of Dad Sews, we're going to make this awesome, warm, rugged, fleece, unisex capelet. Hey, how'd you get so tall? Mm. Dad Sews! Dad Sews! Dad Sews! Hey everyone, thanks for dropping by for another episode of Dad Sews. I truly appreciate you stopping by here. All right, now we have a fun project today. It is a fleece capelet. Baby, it's cold outside. And with that chilly weather, you need to bundle up. And my kids are always complaining about cold, so I'm making this for my son, Carlin. It's a capelet. It's kind of a cape. It's got a big, thick neck around it. And that way, he doesn't have to bundle up too much. He can still play around in the woods but he's got this cool camo capelet made out of fleece. All right, now this pattern comes from Fleece Fun and it is free and I have linked it below. So you can click on that and get your own free pattern. Now they have it in small, medium, large, I think extra large and women's sizes, but he is a 10 year old boy. Small women should be fine for this. I think it's kind of a unisex kind of thing. So I'm gonna make it for him play out in the woods. All right, now you need to follow their directions really well on how to put the pattern together and then cut it properly. I did not follow the directions at first. I just started cutting the pieces and that was to my error. All right, now once you get everything together and you cut out your pattern, this is taped, and then you'll see that one of the pieces you cut whole and then another piece you cut on the dotted line. So what I did was I traced this out onto butcher or contractor paper. You can get this contractor paper at Lowe's, very cheap in a roll. And then I cut out the pattern with that piece on the top. And then when I cut out my second piece, I went ahead and cut this too. So I cut right through the pattern and the fabric as well. The reason I like to do this is I don't mess up my original pattern and I can always transfer it to contractor or butcher paper. To transfer this dotted line, all I did was poke holes through the dots and then marked that with a Sharpie on my paper. Now I can toss these and I still have this pristine copy here to fold and put away in my pile of patterns. All right, let's go ahead and start sewing. All right, well, we are ready to sew. Now we're sewing the main part of the cape first. That's this piece right here on the pattern. And of course you have another piece that looks just like it, but with that scoop cut out. We're going to go ahead and pin those together. All right. Now with fleece and some other materials, sometimes it's easier if you use a walking foot on your machine. I have one that came with this Juki, but the reason I'm not using one today is, well, A, because it's still in the box, but B, I would like to see if I can do it with the regular foot to show you guys that yes, you can put this together with just a basic machine. Although if you really want an awesome machine, I always recommend Juki brand. It is like having a professional, I mean really commercial sewing machine in your home. And that's not just because I work with Fabricut who's a licensed Juki dealer. I really truly love the Juki brand. All right, so we're gonna pin this together and you're gonna wanna put right sides together if you have right sides. This fleece is exactly the same on both sides. A lot of fleece is, and that's one of the reasons I like working with it. All right, now we're gonna sew down this side and this side right here. You can see the sides of the cape on the overhead cam. All right, let's get to sewing. Now, of course, you have a coordinating color, right, to your uh, fabric. I've got a nice little hunter green, so. We'll use that and we'll start doing uh, about a half an inch seam allowance. I'm going to the edge of my foot. That's going to be different for everybody in their machine. I'm probably closer to a quarter. Now, don't forget to backstitch, especially if you are making this for a child because they are going to destroy it. But really, you should backstitch anyway. All right, go ahead and sew down that side. You want to be very careful that your fleece doesn't slide around or move around on you. And we're just going to, you know, go slow and steady. I'm not all about racing when I sew. 
I'd rather try to get it right. And on Dad Sews, if you're a new viewer, the first time I've sewn this is today in front of you. So while I'm running the cameras and running the show and, oh, pricking my finger and talking to you, this is the very first time I've sewn this. I didn't do a test piece before. So if there are mistakes, you will see them. That's a promise on Dad Sews. But what's our motto? Hashtag, because it's online, hashtag sew, fail, repeat. All right, once you get to the end, what do you do? You backstitch, all right? One of the cool things about my Juki is that I can make the pedal, if I click it one way, actually do a backstitch or a cut. But right now I have it doing a cut, so. Oh, no I don't, I have it doing a backstitch. I forgot what I did. All right, so now I cut my thread, there we go. All right, that looks really good. I'm gonna go ahead and do up this other side and then we'll be right back, okay? All right, well we've got the main part of our cape done. Now we have the parts of our cowl to do. Now you should, if you're making the double folded cowl, you should have two pieces of each. You can make a single cowl, but I think this is gonna be nice and warm. And I'll be honest with you, my kids are babies. They're always complaining about the cold weather. So I'm making the double sided. There's one that's round, and then there's one that we cut along the dotted lines, correct? We're gonna sew on this bottom large piece, all right? Line those up as best you can. Uh, you probably should pin them, but I'm just winging it, man. And you wanna make sure that you're given a good seam allowance. Try to keep it as even as possible, right? And if you see that you got a little bit of a jagged cut there, just kind of stay close to where you know it should be. This is why pinning is smart, but this is one straight line. I'm pretty sure I can eyeball this. And one of the other things I love about fleece is it's super forgiving. You know, a lot of people say, hey, I'm going to make a fleece blanket. And they go ahead and buy a piece of fleece and then they just cut it to the size they want. And they leave the ed edges jagged because it doesn't matter. Uh, fleece is very resilient. It doesn't tatter very much. It doesn't have threads hanging off of it. So people can feel like they accomplished making a blanket when really all they did was cut it. Of course, what you want to do is at least fold those edges over and pop it on your juki and make it look nice, right? Tidy, as my friends over the pond say. All right, we're almost there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and sew the long edge on this piece as well. And again, it's just the long sides, long side on that piece with the hump. And then once I'm done doing that, we're gonna start assembling the cow into a tube. I will be right back with that step. All right, so we're ready to start assembling our double thick cow, okay? So you have the round piece here. You see the round there and the flat side? Let's just open that all the way up and then let's keep our seam kind of puckered up there. And then we have our other piece that's flat and doesn't have that hump on it. We're gonna do the same thing. And then we are going to match up these edges. And if you did a good job cutting, then it should come pretty close. See right there. So we are going to pin this. I do not wanna screw it up. So put some pins in this baby. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna move all the way down here as we pin to this center point. And then we're gonna keep going. We're gonna start making like a big butterfly right now, okay? I think that's a good way to describe it. Go ahead and put another right here in this corner. All right, and then we are just going to keep going all the way down here, you see? So we've got kind of like a big butterfly wing, and we're gonna keep pinning. All right, let's go ahead and slide this under ah, and start finalizing this cow, all right? Now fleece does stretch, so be careful that you're really not pulling it through your machine, that you're letting your machine do the work for you, okay? Go ahead and back stitch. Your natural inclination is to want to push the fabric through, and I know because I do it all the time, and it's really a bad idea. So you want to let your machine do the work for you, and make sure that you don't sew through your pens. All right, go ahead and sew this bulky area. You're probably gonna have to turn it as you go. It's okay, we can handle that, right? Turn as you go. 
And also, there's an art to learning how to pin material and where you're going to need to be pulling out the pins. I pinned mine down long ways, and that wasn't really smart because now they're underneath and I need them to be sticking out of the side. So sometimes once you pin your material, here's a good tip. Just lay it up to your machine and say, can I get to the pins at that angle? Because if I can't, you should probably repin it. But I'm just, I'm trucking through for you guys right now. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and finish this side and then we will pin the other side and we'll be really close to having this capelet done. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Hey everyone, we'll get right back to the episode in a second, but we have the all new Wheel of Fabric from our sponsor, Fabricut.com. All right, I'm gonna give the wheel a spin and we're gonna give something away. All right, it landed on scrap. Now, if that doesn't sound like a great thing, it is, you're gonna win a scrap pile from all of the projects that I've made here at Dad Sew. So, so you might get some fleece for a hat. You might get some cotton. You might get some stretchy legging material. You're gonna get something great from our sponsor, Fabricut.com and Dad Sews. So. Now, to win this prize, you have to be a subscriber at youtube.com slash Dad Sews, and you have to like my page at facebook.com slash dad sews. All right, I'm going to find one of you subscribers that's on both, and you're going to win an awesome dad sews scrap prize. Now, future winnings could be a yard of fabric, uh, more scraps, a fat quarter, or, well, we've got some patterns to give away as well. All right, let's get back to the episode. All right, now, this is a free pattern that's on Fleece Fun, and there is a corresponding video that goes with it. I gotta tell you, I was very confused by the video. I haven't been sewing that long in my life, but it didn't really show you the fabric being done in a well-lit area, and it was a black fabric, so I couldn't tell where the seams were, and there were a couple of parts that were just confusing. So, here's what I'm suggesting. You have your tube that's wrong sides out. You can see all of your seams. You are going to take it and you're gonna fold it in half in on itself, okay? So we fold it just like that so that our round sides are with our round sides and our flat sides are with our flat sides, all right? Just basically take the seam and shake it out. You should have everything lined up. Now it suggested doing a basting stitch, which is a very long loose stitch. Um, on my machine it's set to a five and it does a very wide stitch and that way it'll just hold everything together when you sew it. I'm not going to do that. I don't think it's necessary. It definitely would make things easier just because there's so much fleece here. All right, there we have it. We've turned it in on itself. The right sides out are flat sides there, our round sides there. Now this was the confusing part for me. And what I'm gonna suggest is that you leave the cape part wrong side out so that the seams are out just like this, okay? Now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna slide the cowl into it. That way the right sides are touching. I think this would be so much easier. So we open up our capelet and we slide the cowl inside. See, sometimes I want to do some things that I see online because I find it interesting. And sometimes I want to do something I've seen online because I didn't understand what the heck they were talking about. And I spent a half an hour cussing, trying to figure it out and even get my wife to help me out. And I think, I'm not saying I can do it better than that, but I'm trying to make the instructions a little more clear. And honestly, Fleece Fun is an excellent site and there's great instructions, but sometimes you just need to look at it from a different perspective. So this is what I'm doing. I just slide the cow into the cape or the capelet, and then I'm pinning everything together. Now, the reason you do the right sides to right sides is because that way the seam is soft on your uh, collar and your shoulder, your neckline, and not itchy. So that's a very good idea. I dig that she did that. I just couldn't understand what the heck she was talking about. So what I finally did was I took the pieces that I had put together and I put them on my son and just kind of saw how they lined up and then figured it out. 
So if you don't have a sewing dummy, find a wife or kid and they'll make a great dummy for you. All right, so I am going to pin this and then we're going to take it over to the sewing machine. Like I said, if you want to do a basting stitch, by all means, do a basting stitch. It might help hold things together, but I think we're gonna be okay. Everything is right sides together. We've got our round piece and we've got our uh, straight piece. All right, now what I've done is I've removed the tabletop of my sewing machine. This is going to allow me to loop right around the machine. So I'm gonna start just behind one of my previous seams. Raise my foot all the way up because I've got three layers of fleece here. Make sure that they're lined up. I'm gonna start sewing. I'm gonna go ahead and sew all the way around and then I'm gonna show you a little finishing step to make things look uh, a little more professional, a little more nice. I'll be right back. All right, so here we go. We have our double thick cow sewn onto our capelet. Now, if you did a good straight job cutting on the bottom, you could be done. Like I said, people make blankets out of fleece and think, I don't have to sew it. That's true, but I did a really bad job cutting. And plus, you just want things to look nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this under and do a zigzag stitch all the way around. That way it looks nice and tidy. All right, next you're gonna be seeing some pictures of my son out in the woods gallivanting around. I think this looks like something that Luke Skywalker would have worn in Return of the Jedi, which makes it super cool to me because I wanted to be Luke Skywalker growing up. Thank you for joining me for this episode. Send your pictures of what you made, your capelet, to facebook.com slash dadsews. Post them there and I will be happy to share. Don't forget, share with your friends, subscribe and like our Facebook page and you could be included on the Wheel of Fabric from our sponsor, FabricHut.com. Thanks again for watching and sharing. And don't forget, hashtag so fail, repeat. We'll see you next time. This production is brought to you by the Plaid Dad Blog Podcast Network. For more information, visit us at plaiddadblog.com.